Now that we know what a vector is, where do we find it in logic? It's right here underneath the router. The whole router section switches from being a router to a vector. It's just a graphical switch. Both sections can be active at the same time. Now, the vector area here is made up of a bunch of different sections. The first one, and probably the most important one, is the timeline, which is located right here. And just like on my submarine sonar, we have dots and we have time periods in milliseconds between the dots. And we'll get into that in more detail. The next section is located right here beneath the timeline. And this is where we can set the vector section's modes. Things for looping and envelopes and curves and timing, all kinds of stuff. And like I said, we'll be getting into this section in more detail later. Now, over here to the right, we have a router. And it's very much like the routers in the router section, with one big exception. The routers in the router section allow you to create any target you want. However, the router in the vector section is normal to the X and Y targets of the XY pad. The sources for those targets are the same ones that you'll find in the router section. Now, this area over here to the right is your global area. This is where we switch from the vector to the router. And more important, this is where we pick the vector mode, where we choose where the vector's control data is being sent. So we have the timeline, where we have points and distance between the points. We have the mode area, where we select different modes. We have the router area. And we have the global area right over here. So that's the geography of the ES2's vector section. Now we're going to go in and dig very deep into how each section works so that you can become a good vector programmer. Ready?